Hey everybody, Chris here from Project Option, and in this video we're going to talk about gauging option liquidity with the bid-ask spread. Now the bid-ask spread is extremely important because it represents the hidden costs of entering and exiting positions. So in this video you're going to learn what the bid-ask spread is, and you're going to learn about you know minimum bid-ask spread values that you're looking for, and you're also going to learn how the bid-ask spread changes with the strike price of an option and with market volatility. So before getting into the actual bid ask spread, let's talk about the terms bid and ask by themselves. So the best best asking price or the ask is the lowest price someone is willing to sell an asset for and it's the price you'll have to pay if you want to buy a stock or option immediately. So if you're looking to get into a trade, if you're looking to buy a stock or option very quickly, you'll have to pay a price close to the asking price. Now, the bid is the highest price someone is willing to pay for an asset, and it's the price you'll have to sell for if you want to sell immediately. So if you own a stock or an option and you want to sell that stock or option immediately, you'll have to sell for a price at the bid or close to the bid. Now, the mid price is just the midpoint between the bid and the ask. So in this example, we're looking at the market for a stock or option, and the asking price is $3.50, and the bidding price is $3.00. So the mid price in this case would be $3.25. So if someone wanted to immediately sell this stocker option, they would have to sell at $3. And if they wanted to buy this stocker option, they would have to buy for $3.50. Now in a market like this that has a 50 cent wide bid ask spread, it's always advisable to try and fill your trade near the mid price. So it doesn't matter if you're buying or selling, in this case you would want to try to buy or sell at $3.25. Now if you can't get filled at that price, then you work towards the ask if you're buying and you work towards the bid if you're selling. So the bid ask spread represents the hidden cost of trading because the bid ask spread indicates the loss from buying at the ask and selling at the bid. So for example, let's say you're looking at shares of stock and the bidding price is $100.02 and the asking price is $100.03. The bid ask spread in this case would be one penny. Now, if you bought 100 shares at the asking price of $100.03 and sold the 100 shares for $100.02, you would lose one cent per share, and on 100 shares, your loss would be $1. That's pretty good. Now, on the call option, the bidding price is $5.10 and the asking price is $6.30. The bid-ask spread on that call option is $1.20. Now, since an option's value is really the option's price times 100, if you bought at the asking price of $6.30 and sold at the bidding price of $5.10, your loss would be $120 per contract. It's pretty massive for just entering and exiting the position without even holding it. Now on the put option, the bidding price is $4.30 and the asking price is $4.35. The bid ask spread in that case is $0.05, cents, which means if you bought the option for $4.35 and you sold the option for $4.30, you would lose five dollars per contract. Not too bad. So clearly out of these three products you're probably going to want to trade the shares of stock or the put option. You're probably going to stay far away from that call option with a bid ask spread of a dollar twenty. Now you can always try to get filled near the mid price and reduce the cost of entering and exiting the trade but with wider bid ask spreads it's going to be harder and harder to get filled near the mid price. So the bottom line is that trading products with narrow bid ask spreads makes it very easy for you to enter and exit positions without incurring massive costs like it would with the call option in, in this example. Now that you know the basics of what the bid ask spread represents, let's talk about some factors that can contribute to a wider or narrower bid ask spread. So the three things we're going to talk about are whether an option is in the money, at the money, or out of the money, the option's number of days until expiration, and the overall level of market volatility. So we're going to look at visual examples to demonstrate all of these three concepts. So the first thing we're going to look at is the bid-ask spread of in the money, at the money, and out of the money calls and puts. So in this example we're looking at SPY options with 60 days to expiration. Now as we can see here the at the money options are around the 205 strike. And as we can see options that are close to at the money have the narrowest bid ask spreads whereas in the money calls and in the money puts have the widest bid ask spreads. 
Now that's typically because in the money options are more and more expensive, so naturally the spreads will be wider on more expensive options. Additionally, in the money options typically have less trading volume, which also contributes to a wider bid ask spread. In regards to out of the money options, out of the money options get cheaper and cheaper as you move further out of the money. And on a cheaper option, there's a ceiling on how, how wide the bid ask spread can really be. For example, if an option is only worth 10 cents, it can't have a 20 cent bid ask spread unless one of those prices is negative, which doesn't really make any sense. So now we're going to look at SPY options with 365 days to expiration. So in this graph, note that the narrowest bid ask spreads for the at the money options are around two and a half to five cents wide. Now let's see what happens when we look at the options with a year until expiration. So now we're looking at SPY options with around 365 days until expiration. Now as we can see, the at the money options have bid ask spreads around 15 to 20 cents while the out-of-the-money options have bid-ask spreads around 15 cents. So as we can see here, the at-the-money and the out-of-the-money options have higher bid-ask spreads. Now, two things are contributing to this. The first thing is that longer-term options are more expensive and therefore will naturally have wider bid-ask spreads, but also longer-term options typically have less trading volume than near-term options, which also contributes to a wider bid-ask spread. So the last thing we'll look at is the bid ask spread versus market volatility. So typically as markets become more volatile, bid ask spreads will naturally widen out because the stock prices will be more volatile and they'll be moving around more, which naturally means the option prices on that stock will also be more volatile. Now with more uncertainty around fill prices, the bid ask spreads will will widen out. So in this visual, we're looking at the average at the money bid ask spread for SPY options in the September 2015 expiration cycle. So on each trading day, we're looking at the at the money call and the at the money put in that September cycle, and we're averaging their bid ask spreads. Now we're comparing the bid ask spread on each day to the level of the VIX index. Now when markets become more volatile, the VIX index will also tend to increase because more market volatility means more people are going to be willing to buy options and pay higher premiums for options to either hedge or speculate on their option positions. So as we can see here between August 3rd and you know just before August 24th the VIX index was trading below 15 and the average bid ask spread for those SPY options was less than 5 cents. However on August 24th the VIX spiked to 40 because the market was down a considerable amount. Now on the close of that day, the average at the money bid ask spread for SPY options was 15 cents. However, it's important to note that right when the market opened on August 24th, SPY options had bid ask spreads anywhere between two to four dollars in some cases. And that's because the market opened down 5%, which is a considerable move for one trading day. So the bottom line is that when markets become more volatile or even individual stocks become more volatile, expect the bid ask spreads of those options to widen out significantly. Alright, so to recap the main concepts from this video, the bid ask spread is the difference between the best bidding price or buying price and the best asking price or selling price. Now shares of stock tend to have very narrow bid ask spreads while options tend to have wider bid ask spreads. So when you're trading options be more mindful of the bid ask spread. Stick to trading stocks and options with narrow bid ask spreads. So that really means anywhere from one penny in the best case scenario to you know 10 or 15 cents at the widest. But also understand that if you're trading higher price stocks, those those bid ask spreads are naturally going to be wider, and therefore you're going to you're going to want to get filled closer to the mid price on those trades if you do trade them. Next, deep in the money or long term options tend to have the widest bid ask spreads because those options are more expensive and they tend to have less trading volume than at the money near term options. Lastly, when market volatility increases, bid ask spreads tend to widen significantly. So just keep that in mind. All right, well that wraps up this video on the bid ask spread. I hope you learned something new. And if you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as you'll get new video alerts when we come out with new topics. Also, if you want to give us a follow on Twitter, we also publish new content there as well and talk about stuff that we're doing on our website.